EDI hasn't changed much since the early to mid 90s. Companies like Sears Canada had a number of different programs including catalog or direct to store shipments or direct to DC shipments. And based on the the type of EDI program, you needed to operate differently within the warehouse. So one was a, a mixed SKU detailed carton level ASN or an 856 where you might have multiple items in a box and then on that box was a UCC 128 label. Uh, we called it the MH10 back then, now it's called a GS1. On that label is a serial number that uniquely describes what's in the box. If you were to scan the serial number in a database, you could look up and see what's inside each box. So wholesale distributors would need to prepare those shipments with all of the MH10 labels, send it all off to their distribution center, as a for instance, and then as Sears would receive those boxes into the distribution centers, they would know what's in every box, and it would go into this big sortation system, and there would be trucks lined up going out to every store, and those boxes would then get routed to the proper trucks, which would then go out to the stores. A lot of that has changed uh, now that um, a lot of customers are ordering online. The EDI is changing in that it describes single shipments going out to specific customers. Or in the case of companies like Amazon, the, the scale in which companies like Amazon are buying product from wholesale distributors is changing dramatically. Customers like Amazon will order once or twice a quarter these massive shipments going out to their distribution centers. They'll almost clean out your warehouse. And there's all sorts of complexity involved in that. What they require is that you describe that shipment in detail. In other words, what are all the boxes that you're shipping? What's the weight of each box? What are the dimensions of each box? So that they can then do what's known as routing. Um, that routing information gets crunched by Amazon on their portal and they return the carrier. And they return a pro bill number, they return a way bill number. That pro bill number and that way bill number then needs to be placed on the labels. And you also need to have a unique serial number just like what we talked about before with Sears where that unique serial number gets put on each label along with the pro bill number and the way bill number in the format that Amazon desires so that when they receive those boxes into their warehouse, they can then do the same thing, which is take the, the product and put it on their shelves or route it to the appropriate location in the warehouse. What that means for a distribution center is that you have to gather and prepare all of the products for shipment, get it into the boxes before you even know what the labels are. Amazon will tell you what the labels need to be, basically, and then you have to match all of those labels to the individual shipping cartons, which can be an absolute nightmare. So without the proper systems in place, it's very difficult to manage those kinds of processes. What you not need to start thinking about is, is, do you have the dimensional data of each one of the products? Um, in this new world of dim weighting for UPS and FedEx, they're requiring you to not only tell them what's the weight of each carton, but what's the actual dimensions of each carton. And that means knowing that prior to even putting those cartons together, if you want to have an efficient process for picking orders and staging them for, product, for companies like Amazon so that they can do effective routing, uh, it's difficult, that balance between what those retailers require and what you can do, balancing those requirements can be very, very tedious, but with the proper systems, it's possible. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum, companies like Target.com and the, the new Wayfair uh, require extremely specialized packing slips uh, in addition to the EDI 850s and the 856 documents. So you have to prepare um, a, a, a customer formatted packing slip in the case of companies like Wayfair. I've seen promotions that need to be placed on the packing slips which are specific to the customer browsing profiles. So that can be really complex when Wayfair sends you a specific promotion or a specific coupon that needs to be placed on the order for a specific customer. Imagine the challenges associated with that. 
So having the proper systems that will allow you to catalog those coupons, place it on the packing slip for shipment, having those, the proper systems in place will make it a lot easier for you to do those kinds of transactions. Uh, being able to uh, take the routing requirements, whether they're asking you to ship by a FedEx, UPS, uh, or by an LTL carrier. Uh, in the case of direct-to-consumer shipments, it's almost exclusively by small parcel. Having the proper systems in place to enforce the shipping policies is absolutely vital. The last thing you want to do is ship an order by FedEx when Walmart said ship it by UPS. So what we've seen is some complexity around retail-specific packing slips. One example is a retailer that has a coupon that's specific to their customer browsing profiles. So imagine if you're a, uh, a shopper at, at one of these retail websites, they may be tracking your browsing history on their website, perhaps they're tracking browsing history on other websites, and they've, they've now profiled you and want to make sure that they capture that retail experience effectively. So one of the things that they do is they'll put a coupon onto your packing slip so that if you order something from them, the shipment will arrive and when you open up the box there'll be a packing slip and on that packing slip will be a coupon that's specific to your browsing history. So imagine the impact that that has as a distributor trying to get that product out the door. Not only do you have to uh, have a, a retail specific packing slip, but now you actually have to place that customer specific coupon on that packing slip that can get really complex if you don't have the proper systems in place. I've seen specific examples of how companies deal with customer specific packing slip requirements in a manual environment. One example is if you're doing drop ships for walmart.com or target.com as a for instance, perhaps what you'll do is print out uh, all of the walmart.com packing slips and then use those packing slips to go out and pick all the orders for walmart.com in the, in the warehouse. And then you'll print out the target.com packing slips and pick all the target.com orders. And then you'll have to match those packing slips with the shipment and then go to a shipping station and produce the carrier specific labels, make sure all of the compliance is done properly. What happens in those cases is you may be going to the same bin location three, four, five times uh, because you need to split the orders for those multiple retail partners. In the case of having a proper system to handle those requirements, uh, being able to print out those packing slips variably, in other words, being able to print out those packing slips on demand will allow you to pull together all of those orders at once and avoid all of the inefficiencies around going to the bin location multiple times to grab the same product. Whether your order volumes are growing uh, from hundreds to thousands to hundreds of thousands as you plan out your growth, uh, or if you're shipping lots of massive orders to Amazon, you need to rethink how you're going to reshape your warehouse processes in order to meet vendor compliance requirements for Amazon or customer requirements because they're expecting their orders shipped next day or same day, you know, depending on the, the expectations that you set for them. The one thing you have to keep in mind is with retail drop shipments, uh, when you're fulfilling on behalf of the retail partner, you have to make sure that orders get fulfilled effectively. If you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to lose on your scorecard. Uh, that your retail partners are going to negatively weight your business based on how you fulfill. So if you don't have the proper systems in place, what you'll find is that variability in your ability to fulfill the retail partner's orders is going to affect your positioning on their websites. So you need to make sure that you have the right systems in place.